Hello and welcome to Come to Think of It, the podcast diary program on Biz 99.9 FM Substitute Radio. I'm Garrick No Deal, today's diarist. Thank you for joining me. I've just finished watching the entire third season of Avatar The Legend of Korra. In this season, the main bad guys are the Red Lotus, a small conspiratorial group of anti-state terrorists. Their goal is to assassinate all heads of state and destroy all governments, to thereby create a world free of governments and rulers entirely. Only by eliminating all institutions of power and oppression will balance in the world be restored, they claim. And they want to permanently get rid of the Avatar, which will help this project of theirs along, although that part of the plot isn't explained very well. The Red Lotus leader, Zahir, is successful in assassinating one of the heads of state, namely the Earth Queen, who dies from asphyxiation. He then announces via radio the effective immediately collapse of the Earth Nation government. First order of business, the old class segregation system is dismantled. No longer are the poor restricted to the filthy slums, but can move up to the higher levels where the rich people live and where the houses and streets are clean. Zahir encourages the citizens of the Earth Nation, in words that are almost identical to Bane in the third Batman movie, to take back their city, which is rightfully theirs. It should be noted that everyone agrees, including Korra and the rest of Team Avatar, that the Earth Queen was a horrible despot, so no one is mourning her death over her individual person. The only reason why anyone would care that she was dead is for the fact of her being a monarch. Immediately when that happens, the Earth Nation capital city of Ba Sing Se is torn to shreds through mass rioting and looting, as poor people break into the royal palace and steal all the Queen's treasures. Rich people are terrorised as the unwashed masses awaken in a chaotic craze to break into their homes and steal all their belongings. The city has huge fires in the streets and buildings are collapsing all around. Anarchy has taken over and everything looks bleak. The lesson that we're meant to take out of all this is the classic misanthropy of mainstream liberalism. Human nature is centred around the deep and powerful urge inside of all of us to steal and murder and destroy, primal anarchy that forms the naked truth of the human soul. The misanthropy is brought forth because the very worst is thought of ordinary human beings. They have deep animalistic urges just below the surface, which would spring forth at any moment if we're not careful. But thankfully for all of us, States, as powerful and centralised institutions, can help provide stability, keeping human nature in check and ensuring that there's a rational and healthy civilization in existence. The animal and primal urges are placed under lock and key, so that the anarchy of the human soul is not allowed to expose itself. The domestication of the human is achieved through the existence and dominance of the state as a social and political institution. This is a quite straightforward anti-human and class-biased value system. It assumes that humans are deep down little more than despicable and vile creatures. Rather than optimistically hoping to see humans grow and develop, its starting point is the decline into self-destruction for the human race. There's also this elitist and snobbish attitude towards the masses, i.e. ordinary humans. While the tiny minority of wealthy and powerful have been able to fully evolve out of the primitive human nature, it's the ordinary people on the streets who still have deep and powerful urges to steal and destroy. There are two options that we are given, stability or anarchy. If you live in a world with a government, you will have a stable and rational world. But if there's no government, then the barbaric human nature will be unleashed, and all manner of horror and anarchy will destroy everything in sight. 
Like the parent who controls and dominates over their child in order to stop them from walking into open traffic and getting themselves killed, the government provides us with safety and protection from the foolishness of our own natures. And this is done through limiting our freedoms to what is deemed safe and acceptable. The divine and unchallenged authority of the parent who knows best to take care of their child is mirrored with the state knowing what's best for the human citizenry. You simply have to submit to this authority, live under the rules that have been placed before you, and enjoy the safety that's provided for you. In general, liberals adore the state, thinking that power and authority must be good things because they're so rational and strong. They become sycophants for the rich and powerful, always thinking up new ways of justifying the status quo and defending the incumbent social order. They therefore provide this ideological justification for the existence of the state. If we didn't have it, we'd be living in a nightmarish horror, just like how a child would inevitably and assuredly kill itself if left on its own for a long period of time without parents. So too will the human race destroy itself if not for the state to stand above and look after us. And that's all the time we have for today. This has been Come To Think Of It on Biz 99.9 .9 FM Substitute Radio. I'm Garrick No Deal. Thanks for listening to the program. Until next time, goodbye.